Zikr al Abidin, went and bought, acquired slaves. How many? Sometimes in some years, he acquires 1,000, 2,000 slaves even sometimes. He had a place out of Medina where he had 500 palm trees. Then al Abidin had a little piece of land out of Medina, 500 palm trees, and that's why they called him a Sajjad. Zayn al-Abidin's name is really Ali, his name, his name is not Zayn al-Abidin. But his title is Zayn al-Abidin because of his husnu ibadati, because his worship was so beautiful. So he was the beauty of worshippers. Zayn al-Abidin is the beauty of worshippers. But his name is also a sajjad. A sajjad means the one who makes sujood. And the reason he was called that, because he used to go out at night to his land out of Medina, and he prays two rak'ah next to each tree until the, until the day comes. From from Aisha Dawan to Fajr, and he prays two rakah next to each tree. That's what they call him as Sajjad. But his really name is Ali. His name is Ali ibn Hussein wa Fatima ibn Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Hussein ibn Ali ibn Fatima. He acquired these slaves. What does he do with the slaves? Puts them there and leaves them? No, no. This is the plan. They get an energized crash course for one year from Ramadan to Ramadan. He gets all these slaves, wherever you're from. You're from this, you're from that, you're from Arab, you're Ajam, you are from uh, Africa, you are from Asia, you are from this, you are from that. Gather them, all of them, whatever, 500, 1,000, 2,000, whatever it is. He puts them in his home, outside of Medina, and one full year, 12 months of crash, intensive crash course, في علوم العقائد والفقه والتفسير والأصول والنحو والبلاغة, until these people take money, until you take you take a crash course on the hands of Zayn al-Abideen, Ali ibn Hussein, for one year, what do you think you're going to be? You're going to be like an ocean of knowledge. One year under the hands of Zayn al-Abideen, intensive study, after one year, Ramadan time, before the Eid, he brings them, where are you from? I am from, uh, for example, India. Here's some money, go, you are free for the path of Allah. Go teach Islam. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Sham. Go, you are free. Where, everyone, wherever they're from, he gets some money for them, gives them money for the travel, he frees them for the path of Allah, and gives them, arming them with all this knowledge, so they can go and they can guide their communities. Because of the efforts of Zayn al-Abideen, Ali ibn Hussein, and his students, the entire Indian continent became Muslim. Don't think because of the Hajjaj, because it's the time of the Hajjaj. Muhammad ibn Qasim al Thaqafi and others who went, all these uh, du'at who went to India, they were students of Zayn al Abidin, Ali ibn Hussein, and because of these efforts, the entire Indian continent became Muslim. And India remained a Muslim country, an ocean swimming in the rule of Islam, India. Huh? Until 1,005 Hijra, today we are 1, 1, 14, 24, 26, 1,005 of Hijra, Britain came into India, divided India, stayed in India 350 years until Gandhi went with his revolution in the late 40s. Huh? But for 1,000 years, India was swimming in the Nur of Islam, and many scholars came from India until today. That's one thing. What did he do also? Let me just go through a few things because really the life of Zayn al-Abidin is very energetic, very energized and it's filled with actions. Really we don't have the time to cover it all. Let me just give you a few scenes throughout his life with his mother, Zayn al-Abidin. They came to him and they said, Yabna Rasulullah, O son of Rasulullah, I don't see you eating with your mother and you're supposed to be good to your mother. Why don't you eat when you put food for her? Why don't you eat with her? She said, I am afraid that my hand would go to something that her eye looked on. I don't want my hand to go on something her eye looked on. So I let her eat, then I eat. Huh? A man came to him and started cur cursing him. Cursing him, cursing his family. In the Masjid of Rasulullah Cursing him, cursing him, cursing him. Huh? And he doesn't answer. And then he says, Haba, is that not Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rasulullah answered. He turned around to him and he said, if what you said about me is true, then I ask Allah to forgive me. You cast me, you call me all kinds of names. If they are true, I ask Allah to forgive me. And if they are not true, I ask Allah to forgive me. The man looked at him, he overwhelmed. He went kissing his forehead and he says, Wallah, Ya Rasulullah, they are not in you, they are in me. Huh? Jariya, one of the jawari that he had, 
was helping him pour in some water to make wudu. He's making wudu, Fajr time, probably, I think from the narration, from the appearance of the narration, was Fajr time, or Isha time, very late. Anyway, the jug of water, of course the jug was metal at that time, fell from her hand, went and hit the forehead of Zayn Abidin. She looked at him, he wanted to say something, she looked at him, she said, al Ghayb, Ayah in the Quran. Those who hold their anger. And he told her, okay. Had kadam, had kadam to I, I am holding my anger. And then she told him, she continued the ayah, and those who forgive people, the meaning. He says, okay, I forgive you. She said, Allah, you have one more sinin. The continuation of the ayah, and the meaning, and Allah likes those who do good. He said, go, you are free. What do you want me to do? Go, you are free. At the end of Ramadan, when he freed the people he acquired, and nobody is a slave, when he freed those previously slaves, what did he do to them? Throughout the year, he, he was writing all their mistakes or dhulam. If they committed any dhulam towards him, or mistakes in the service, he wrote it down. At the time of Ramadan, he would come to them, gather them all together. He said, I have to make a deal with you. What's the deal? All these slaves, hundreds. He said, well, you made so many mistakes. And I haven't written. Do you agree that they such and such, you did this? Yes, I do. Yeah, do you agree? Okay. He said, I make a deal with you. That if I forgive you, you forgive me. And he stands, and they, they, he stands in the middle of them, says, Oh Allah, you ordered us to forgive. And forget, Oh Allah, I witness you that I forgive them, so you can forgive me. And then he turns around to them, to his own slaves, he says, Do you forgive me? They say, Oh Allah, we forgive Ali ibn Hussein. Oh Allah, free his neck from fire, just like he freed us from chains. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Kathir, Alhamdulillah, Amar, Wa Ashhadu Wa La Ilaha Illa Allah, Wa Ahdad. لا شريك له رغاما لمن جحد به وكفى واشهد ان سيدنا مولانا محمدا صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم خاتم الانبياء المعتبر صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي وعلى اله اهل الحق والنظر والعلم والاثر. The life of Zain al Abidin is really long and we are out of time but let me end with this. When his son Muhammad was putting him after al Walid killed him in the year 95, al Walid not Malik killed him. When his son Muhammad was putting him to wash him, he started crying, his son. Why? Because they asked him after that, why were you crying when you were washing your father? He said, because I saw the remains of the blackness of the skin where the chains were around his neck and his hands and his feet. In Medina, and this is the last example I'll bring you. In Medina, when the night comes, when no one else is out there, the night comes, people are asleep. He goes he, out of his house, puts every single thing that he has, from food, from wheat, from flour, from bread, from milk, he puts it in a bag. And he puts the bag right on his back. And he walks where? Towards the houses of the poor people in Medina, the very, very poor people in Medina. And he puts something around his face so people don't know who he is. People don't see him with them. And he goes and he gives them, until people started calling him the person with the bag on his back. And the fuqara of Medina, they swore to Allah, they said, Wallah, the sadaqah of night, the sadaqah during the night did not stop in Medina until Zayn al-Abidin died. We did not know who was giving it to us. Until Zayn al-Abidin died, then we realized it was Zayn al-Abidin Ali ibn Hussein. And he used to say this word, and we will finish with this, he used to say, sadaqah al-sir, tutfiru ghadabarram. The sadaqah in secrecy, when no one sees it, puts off the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad 
وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين أعلي مولانا كلمة الحق والدين اللهم لا أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إليه وما لا أراد بهم غير ذلك فاجعل دائرة السوي عليه اللهم رد المسلمين إلى دينك ردا جميلا آتي أنفسنا تقواها وزكينا أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها، اشفد لهم مرضانا وعاف مبتلانا وفك أسرانا وارحم موتانا، اشفد لهم لنا ولمشايخنا ولمن له حق علينا، وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وآله وأقم الصلاة.